So in this video, I'm going to attempt to explain to you where all of the information inside the unit circle comes from. Uh, you may have heard before that the unit circle itself is based on uh, special right triangle ratios, and that's that's very true. So I've drawn out those ratios over here on the side for you, uh, for your convenience. We know that the 45, 45, 90 triangle has sides of x, x, and then a hypotenuse of x root 2. The 30, 60, 90 triangle down here has side lengths of uh, x, x root 3, and a hypotenuse of 2x. So the definition of a unit circle is important. So the definition of a unit circle is going to be a circle with a radius of 1. So that red line right there kind of dictates the radius. And I know that that's going to have a length of 1. So if that segment is one unit long, that means at this point right here, just from the origin, one unit to the right, that's going to be a pretty easy point for us to discover. That's just going to be the point one zero. All right. Well, same thing if I go to the left. If I go one unit left, that's just going to give me the point negative one zero. And if we go one unit straight up, that gives us the point zero one. And if we go one unit straight down, that's going to give us the point zero negative one. All right. So those four points around the uh, circumference are, are pretty easy. When we then we'll go with the 45, 45, uh, 90 triangle first. When we then take this radius and we start to rotate it around the circle, let's say we rotate it 45 degrees to this point right here, this is going to create a 45, 45, 90 triangle with the x-axis. So if we draw that in there, and we know that the hypotenuse still has to have a length of 1, well, we can figure out that these two other sides must be according to this ratio here. So if the hypotenuse is 1, each of these sides has to be equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2. In other words, 1 is equal to x root 2, which means that 1 over root 2 is equal to x. And if we rationalize by multiplying by root 2 over root 2, so 1 half, so our 1 over root 2, times root 2 over root 2 is going to give us root 2 over 2. And that's going to equal each of these sides here. So if this bottom leg of the triangle right there is going to be root 2 over 2. And this vertical leg here is also going to be root 2 over 2. Well, that means that our x and y values at this point are going to be root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, okay? So, that's in the first quadrant. If we then take the same triangle, and we, let's get rid of this value right there for one second, and we might take that same triangle and we draw it in relation to the other side of the x-axis, so that this angle here is now 45 degrees, well, we get the exact same triangle on the opposite side, where that's going to be ooh, not what I meant to do. Where that there is going to be uh, a 45, 90, 45, 45, 90 triangle on the other side. So if that's the case, this is still going to be root 2 over 2. That's still going to be root 2 over 2. So our ordered pair over here is going to now become negative root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2, right? It's just the same point, the x value is negative now. If we draw the same triangle in the third quadrant, where the 45 degree angle is not there, but now here, we end up with the exact same triangle again, right there, where this is still going to be one unit long, this is going to be root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. But now this is in the third quadrant, both the x value and the y value are negative. So this is going to become negative root 2 over 2, comma, negative root 2 over 2. And I'll bet you can probably guess what it's going to be in the fourth quadrant. When we come over here and we take the exact same triangle on this side, and we just move these legs over, we get rid of this information here. It's going to end up being the exact same point. It's just in the fourth quadrant, so we have a positive x value 
and a negative y value. So we get root 2 over 2, comma, negative root 2 over 2. So, so far we've got all the points on the intercepts, the x and the y, uh, the x-intercepts on the left and right, and the y-intercepts on the top and the bottom. And we've also got all of the 45 degree ratios here, here at 45 degrees, here at 135, here at 225, and here at 315 degrees. So the next thing we'll do is we'll look at the 30, 60, 90 ratios. So if we take this radius, all right, and we put it back here, and this time instead of rotating it 45 degrees, we're just going to rotate it 30 degrees. Well, if that's a 30 degree rotation, that means that this here makes a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle with the x-axis, where this angle here is 30, this would be 60, and this would be 90. And if this side here is going to be 1, well, the side opposite of 30 is going to equal 1 half, and the side opposite 60 is going to equal 1 half root 3, or in other words, this here would be root 3 over 2, and this here would be 1 half. So our x value is this length here. That's going to be root 3 over 2. Our y value is 1 half. So this is going to give us this point here, root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. And just like we did with the 45, 45, 90, I can take that exact same triangle and create it over here. So I'm going to get the exact same point we did here over on the other side. So this here is just going to be same point in the second quadrant. So we're going to get a negative root 3 over 2 comma positive 1 half. Take the same triangle, draw it down here. We have the same ratio. This is going to be the same point, but now that's in the third quadrant, both the x value and the y value are negative. And then if I came all the way over to here and drew a third, uh, sorry, a fourth 30, 60, 90, this is going to be the same point, but now in the fourth quadrant. So we have a positive x value and a negative y value. The last couple points, oh, get rid of the radian measure here for a second so I don't confuse anybody. Get rid of that. All right, a little bit bigger. There we go. So the last points are when we take the same 30, 60, 90 triangle, but instead of just rotating it from 30 degrees, so here we are at 0 degrees, instead of rotating it 30 degrees, we're going to actually take it and rotate it 60 degrees. And as we rotate it 60 degrees, we create another 30, 60, 90, but what ends up happening is that the ratios are just going to be flipped. There we go, make that a little bit longer. Make this leg here a little bit shorter. We'll just move our right angle right there. And so now, since the hypotenuse is still 1, a better color there, hypotenuse is still 1, this side here is going to be 1 half, and this vertical side here would be the 1 uh, root 3 over 2, right? This would be the 60 degree angle and the 30 degree angle. So we're still following the same ratios we have set up over here. So if my x value is 1 half, my y value is 3 halves, we can easily come up with the point 1 half comma, oh, sorry, not 3 halves, uh, 1 half comma root 3 over 2. Well, as we've discovered, this here is just going to be the mirror image of it, negative x value, positive y value. Down here would be the mirror image of that, where we have in the third quadrant a negative x and a negative y, and right over here we would have uh, the same value in the fourth quadrant where it's a positive x and a negative y. So that's how we find all the coordinates going around the unit circle. So the next piece, we'll get rid of this stuff here, and then we can delete it. Ooh, that's not at all what I wanted. There we go. Okay, so the next piece is to figure out well, what are the radian measures all the way around. Remember that a radian is equal to, or I should say pi radians, is equal to 180 degrees. Or that because we have two pi radians, 
in a full circle, 2 pi would equal 360 degrees. So what that means then is that if we go from 0, 0 degrees would still be, guess what, 0 radians. If I go 180 degrees, we just said that we know that's going to be pi radians. All right. And everything in between is just going to be a fraction of pi. So if I went 90 degrees, well, 90 degrees is half of 180, so that's going to end up being half of pi, which means pi over 2. If I went from pi another 90 degrees down to 270 degrees, it's going to be 3 quarters of 2 pi, or I could say that it's going to be pi plus a half of pi, and this down here would end up being 3 pi over 2. And then everything in between is just going to be different fractions. So 30 degrees, I could say it's either 1 sixth of a half circle, 1 sixth of 180, which would make this 1 sixth of pi. 45 degrees is 1 fourth of 180, which is going to make this 1 fourth of pi. 60 degrees is 1 third of 180, which makes that pi over 3. We already did pi over 2. 120 is 2 thirds of 180, so this makes it 2 pi over 3. 135 degrees is 3 quarters of 180, and 150 degrees is 5 sixths of 180. Okay, so this is how we get the top half of the unit circle. The bottom half is going to be the exact same thing, it's just added to pi. So I want one more sixth, that means I added one sixth to pi. I went one fourth, it means I added one fourth to pi. I went one third, it means I added one third to pi. We already have three pi over two. This would be five pi over three, seven pi over four, and 11 pi over six, and then it's not written on this unit circle, but if we went all the way around back to zero degrees, we could also call this two pi radians. So that's all the details on the unit circle. I hope this video kind of helps explain a lot of what's going on. There's a lot of information in there, but uh, hopefully this helped clarify a lot of it. Good luck.